All right, getting ready to make um, 200 of these bags right here, this size. Uh, it's a styrofoam cement mud. We're going to use it to insulate a spa that we're constructing in California on a pool with rock work and everything. And I'm This one bag will cover 30 square foot at an inch, so I need 200 of them to, you know, we're going to have the spa dug, and then we're going to put this, shoot this on with a pump, and it'll be about four inches thick. And um, I want to stop here and discuss the reasoning of using this foam cement mix on this spa project. In years past, we would we would dig a spa and then we would place the gunite shell directly onto the dirt or into the grade with no layer of the foam mixture. But after doing so and, and hearing the customers complain about how much propane they were using to heat the, the spa, I thought it'd be nice if we could insulate the gunite shell from thermally conducting the heat into the ground. Uh, gunite's a great conductor of heat from the body of water into the dirt and you lose. So I thought to myself, how could I insulate this? So I came up with a styrofoam where we would put a four inch to a six inch layer and then put the steel and then shoot the gunite. And it was a, it was a thermal break that I was after. But you know, in this image now, let's pretend that this black area is the cement of the foam mix and the little white dots are the styrofoam beads. You can still thermally conduct in the veins of Portland cement that are between each of the little beads of styrofoam, and it does still conduct. It's still cementaceous, but it's far more efficient than just a gunite shell. So this is my thinking. Uh, in the industry, a lot of people say, this styrofoam, but oh my gosh, it's so insulative. Well, it's not as insulative as straight styrofoam with no cement. So I just wanted to discern for you that that thought. It's it's a good insulation break, thermally speaking, but it's not as good as a urethane spray foam or straight styrene, which straight styrene, we really can't get into the shape of a gunite spa in the first place. The styrofoam mud is allowing us to take those undulated surfaces and apply a, a shell, if you will, of the styrofoam mixture. So I thought I'd throw that into the mix. And so we're just going to take these 40 bags that we got here and we're going to make 200 of these and this is a little piece of uh, the styrofoam mud that's been mixed up and it's an inch thick and as i said one of these bags will cover 30 square feet at an inch thick so i just kind of knocked this on some i mean it's tough when you put it up against the dirt it is something you can stand on and you can tie your rebar you know shell in there and, and get the grid in the in there and stand on this and work up against it and it's like hard cement even though it's soft in the sense it's made with a styrene aggregate uh it's uh it's a very very formidable material but yet very insulative so you can use polystyrene we just buy this it's regrind it's a waste product you can get it for next to nothing and or you can use perlite and or vermiculite they're all those two perlite and vermiculite are a, uh, a naturally mined aggregate lightweight aggregate which is insulative as well Polystyrene in my area was just easier and less expensive to get. So you check your area, see what's available, and you obviously want to choose the less cost materials. So polystyrene, regrind, vermiculite, or perlite, those are the mixes. And if you need some information on the formulations, get a hold of me. My contact information is in the description area below. And, uh, I've got a hopper up there, and that's what I usually put four of these bags will fit in that hopper and then I dispense it into this six gun shooter. This is a bag holder that I made and it gets filled with a precise amount of foam and we measure that and I'm going to show you that but this thing rolls so that we can roll it from here at this station filling it with foam and then we move it to the cement area and then the lime area and if we had any other ingredients we we want this six gun to be mobile so that it can go around the shop to the different areas we're dispensing the material and then we'll zip tie it with a rebar quick tie and load it on the trailer and take it with us to tuscan california is where we're actually doing a uh, pool job there and we'll show you that so stick with me we'll get it done all right people have asked me about these drums that uh, i custom made from a 55 gallon drum i wanted the diameter to fit the bag which i successfully did and then I could have made this to where it came around and I, you know, would rivet it together. 
I want it in airspace because when this thing gets full of all the materials and you go to try and pull it out, the bag is vacuumed in a way of speaking, it's, 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 there's a vacuum issue and you can't pull the bag out easily. With that slit in the, in the drum like this, you can pull it out effortlessly because the air sucks in and it lets the bag come out. So that's why I did that. And then this is just, you know, something I took a, a, a 55 gallon drum and just cut it to where I could screw it in. If you notice, there's screws all the way around down there. And that's what holds this thing nice and tight. And, and then the, the putting it on furniture dollies, I took a four foot piece of uh, plywood, four by four, and then just literally put it on two of the furniture dollies and it moves nicely. Even when it's loaded full weight, it's not a problem moving. So that's the lowdown on that. So I took all the bags of foam out of there and these are already made from last time I made some. So we're gonna fill both of these bays and I set these bags over here for right now because we're going to put them in the hopper so they're close at hand but I needed the space to store them here because we're we're about a month and a half out from actually going to uh, Tustin uh, California to do the spa job pool job rock job whatever you want to call it and uh, I'm going to store these here until we put it in the trailer and at that point then I'll be ready so we've got our our lime station as I like to call it this is where we're offloading so this is a station to store palletize whatever you want to say and then we've got our big load of portland so this is where we batch the portland the lime and this is where we set the bags we have the bag putting the bag in the uh you know the bags are here we put them in and then we foam with the foam and we roll them over cement and lime and twist time and put them in there so that's where we're going to start tomorrow. Me and uh, Josiah are going to get some bags made. All right, so just putting the styrofoam raw beads into the hopper. And this being the, be the pre-bagging of these mixes is explicitly being done because if you try and batch separate batches into a mixer on site with the styrofoam, it's blowing all over. It's a mess in my shop, but when you do this in a pre-bag methodology, when you get on site your efficiency has gone way up your mess has gone way down again every portion of this is being done with more efficiency we're concentrating six at a time the cement the foam the lime all of this so and notice in this this particular one it's not a full five gallon bucket of cement it's a modified bucket to where it doesn't hold as much because we're going to put a portion of lime which again three parts of the styrofoam buckets to one part of the cement. In this case, the lime is a little lower bucket yet, and that gives me the full five gallon bucket of a Type F Portland cement. If you can buy the Type S Portland cement, you can, instead of doing this in two stages, you can do it in one. But this is a three cement, three foam to one cement mix. Now, again, just pulling each bag up, getting the zip ties on them, and then either putting them in a pallet, which is a big Gaylord for shipping, and or in this case, just setting it to the side. Or if you've got a trailer and you got to put it in the trailer, this is a station where you're unloading the, the, the bag holder and uh, zip tying it. And again, the zip tie does stop the contents from falling out and or moisture from getting in. I've done this for years like this, and this bag will sit for years without getting any moisture into it. So again, we're stopping now and uh, going to go into uh, loading up the, uh, um, or unload, or going through now and and here i think we got 36 bags now we got 66 bags and then we're going to have 99 and then 132 i think it is and then uh 165 and then 198 so we got 200 bags and we're going to be making 75 more here as i stop all right so we're going to go directly into the trailer now as opposed to putting them here we've got this stacked up but we're going to start emptying it and put it in the trailer it's watertight so it should be fine well we've unloaded this so far and josiah is still working on this but we've got quite a bit in the trailer I figure we can usually hold about 350 bags in this trailer but right now we're just going to have the 200 and we still have more cement here and more foam yet to mix so we got i think we got about another 75 bags to make we're just batching right now but the trailer came right now so we decided we were going to load it up 
We'll be back with you. Well, thank you for taking your time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next video.